So sometimes things don't go according to plan in RxJS land. We might attempt to fetch data from a remote location, read a file locally from disk, or listen in for some unknown event to occur. In all these asynchronous tasks, we might not have control over the endless amount of responses that these requests can result in. And this is where error handling becomes a necessity to deliver a smooth user experience for our users and ensure that the application lives on as expected. So in this talk, we will talk about how to put out fires in RxJS to deliver a burn-free experience for our users. RxJS is a reactive extensions library for JavaScript. It's extremely powerful and can be used for really any event-based code in your application. In Angular, it is most commonly used for asynchronous and callback-based code. The library divides the Angular community, which was brought up by Jeremy Elborn and Alex Rickabau during this, NG, this year's ng-conf. However, putting out fires in RxJS will most likely be a necessity for any Angular developer, uh, especially since the more RxJS, the merrier. The bread and butter of RxJS are observables. In this talk, I will assume that you're somewhat familiar with observables and how they work. But a quick reminder, observables can be seen as a representation of any set of values over any amount of time. That's a quite broad term, but to put it in relation with promises, you can think of them as promises for more than one value. Observables originates from the observer design pattern, where the idea is to have an object, referred to as a subject, which maintains a list of observers which it notifies automatically during state changes. So how do we handle errors in RxJS and ensure a good user experience? After this talk, we will know what operators we have at hand to throw, replace, recover and handle errors and exceptions in RxJS. We will know why we use these operators and what the outcome is of not using them. And of course, some examples of when RxJS error handling really shines and delivers a great user experience. So there are three notification types in RxJS. These notification types are what an observer can expect. The first type is next, which will emit the next value of the observable. The two other notification types are error and complete. And what they have in common is that when an observable has sent an error or complete notification, it won't emit any new values. And a handler for the subscriber for each notification type can be provided. And a handler will listen for a notification and perform any required action. In this example, we create an observable with the off function, which will return the three numbers, one to three, sequentially, immediately after one another. So in this case, the variable foo will first be updated to one, then two, then three. And after this, the observable will send a complete notification. We will log the string complete in the console and the observable will complete and won't emit any more values. Uh, arguments that the subscribe method takes come in many shapes. Um, these are a couple of common variants, but the handlers are completely optional. Uh, in the last example here, uh, we can use the tap operator to set the foo variable as a side effect of the observable rather than through the handlers. And in Angular, it's not uncommon to just simply use the built-in async pipe, which will automatically subscribe, trigger change detection on new values, and unsubscribe when the component is destroyed. In this example, our observable just contained the string hello world. But as soon as it's subscribed to, uh, the tap operator will immediately trigger a side effect, uh, and we will throw an error. Uh, we will enter the error handler, print the error to the console that was thrown earlier, set an error variable with a given error, and then update our title to the string unknown, which is later reflected in the UI. The next operator will not be called, and the observable will terminate instantly. So there are a few limitations to only using the error handler in RxJS. First of all, we can't recover an observable from the error handler. Uh, once an 
error notification is sent, the observable has completely evaporated. We can only pick up what's left, really. And an observable that has terminated early may be insufficient for some use cases. It also introduces the possibility of inconsistent error handling, as each class that subscribes to the observable might implement their own error handler. So if we can delegate this work to the observable itself, we can provide a more consistent experience. So let's check out an example. Here we have a profile page. In this profile page, there is a button which a user can click to load uh, their profile, which will, in this case, retrieve their profile image. Uh, we can see that initially, the backend is unavailable, however. So let's check out the code. I just want to mention that I do know that reading your own ArcGIS code can be difficult at times, and reading someone else's ArcGIS code can be completely dreadful. So I will try to go through it somewhat carefully. So in the template, we can see a button. And this button has a click event handler attached to it. And on click, we will trigger a next notification um, on our subject called button click. Uh, just a quick reminder on subjects. Um, this is straight from the ArcGIS documentation. A subject is a special type of observable that allows values to be multicasted to many observers. And every subject is an observable as well as an observer. So anyone that wants to subscribe to the stream of button clicks can do so by subscribing to the button click stream here. So we will listen to the button click and then add the pipe method and add a switch map operator to flatten the observable that is returned from the get image method. The stream will now return the profile image rather than the button click event. And the subscription handler will receive the profile image in the next handler, an error in the error handler, or a complete notification in the complete handler. So again, the backend is unavailable initially. We wait a little bit, click the load button when we see that the backend is back on, wait a couple of seconds, and we see our profile image. But assume that we are not aware of the fact that the backend is unavailable. We click immediately, and then what? The backend comes back on afterwards. But we have already made a request to get our profile image. So let's see what happens. We click, and our profile image could not be found. So we end up in the error handler of the subscriber. That's where the red toaster comes from. But what happens with observable if we reach the error handler? It evaporates, right? It's gone. The button click subscription that we had open is now closed. So it won't react when we click on it. So let's just take a look at the get image method. Timer uh, 1000 will wait 1000 milliseconds or one second and then emit an observable, the number zero to be exact, but it doesn't matter. We then use a switch map to flatten the observable that Angular's HTTP client get method will return. And whenever the HTTP client has emitted the new value, we will map it to a safe URL. But what happens if the HTTP client returns an error? That's right, our first fire. And currently, there's nothing that will put out that fire. So what happens next? Exactly. The observable will burn up. The error notification is sent to the subscriber, which shows up as a toast, letting us know that the observable has errored out. So from now on, we will not get any more profile images from this button click observable. So what we need to do now is to learn how to put out fires before they take down the entire observable. So we can catch errors in ArcGIS with the catch error operator. It has a lot of similarities with the regular catch operator used in JavaScript. So the catch error operator will not interfere until an error is actually thrown. It will receive the error as an input parameter, as well as its source observable that is erroring out and it returns an observable. And it is common to return a fallback value, but there are alternatives depending on what error handling strategy we want to apply. Uh, side effects may often be performed as well in the catch error function. Uh, 
So, so some benefits then of catching errors are um, we can attach any error handling to the observable and make it responsible to deliver a consistent user experience. And we can also prevent an observable from erroring out and allow recovery of the observable. So here we have two subscribers of an observable and error is thrown and we perform some error handling in the error handler function. As we can see, they differ slightly. But if we instead let the observable return the fallback value, we will always get an identical fallback value for all subscribers. So if we look at the code, we can now see our new catch error operator. It will return a fallback value that will be passed to the next handler. And we will also call our toaster service to get a toaster appearing on the, sc on the screen. When the callback function of the catch error operator has been executed, it's important to remember it will replace the old observable with this new observable. And this new observable only emits one value in this case, the fallback value. So after it is emitted, the observable will complete. And it took me forever to realize this, that what we returned from the catch error operator, uh, the callback function, was not just a lonely value that we for some reason had to wrap in an off function. <laughs> well, that's silly. No, it's, it's actually a complete replacement of the entire observable. That's re really important to remember. So let's finally check out how we can use the catch error operator to prevent an observable from erroring out. I was rather satisfied with this animation. Just want to let you see it again. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, there it is. Yeah, let's keep, let's keep going. In this example, we'll try to load our profile image again. Uh, so let's check out some code. The getImage method initially wraps a base URL as an observable with the use of the off function. Directly on subscription, we'll add a toaster to the view by executing the callback function of the first tap operator. Afterward, we add a switch map to flatten the observable that will come from the getImage from URL method that is called after a three second timer. There are quite a few ArcGIS timers in my example. Um, these are really only to mock the effect of making a backend request. request. Um, so if we remove them, it would look something like this, uh, which is quite a lot easier to read. Um, so we can see that it's, it's not too much funny business going on here. So if we just quickly check the get image from URL method, we can see that it's basically just a get request using Angular's HTTP client with a provided URL. And on next, it will remap the blob to a safe URL. If it succeeds, it will simply ignore the catch error operator. So let's check out the live example. As we see, the backend does not appear to be able to deliver an image. So we replace the API URL with another one an attempt to fetch an image as a fallback image from another endpoint. It appears to work, and we end up with this default profile picture image instead. So let's revisit the code again to see what happens in greater detail. The get the image from URL through an error, which triggered the first catch error block. We set a new URL variable, we add a toaster, uh, update our API URL, and after a three second timer, send away a request for the backup image coming from the new URL. And this time, the get request from the HTTP client succeeded, and the stream emits the default profile picture image instead. Now, what's throw error? It was never called, but what is it? So throw error is a very useful observable, when we want to create an observable that throws an error immediately on subscribe, uh, it will take a factory function as an argument, which is a function that returns an error value. Throw error is an excellent choice together with a catch error operator, since catch error requires the users to return an observable. We use throw error for referring strategies. Uh, if we end up at the situation where the fallback image were not found, we might consider referring the error 
as there is not much left to do. It will have to be caught somewhere though, if we want to avoid destroying the button click observable again. And you might also be wondering, what's finalize? Finalize, not very different from finally, is the last word to be said in a completed or errored out observable. Finalize won't have any knowledge of whether or not the stream completed or terminated uh, by throwing an error. So we will only use it if it don't care about that information. It is a great operator to use when handling housekeeping, uh, which in this case is to reset the API URL to the original API URL and add a toaster to the screen, of course. Finalize uh, is, is quite simple in some sense, but throw error is not in my opinion. Uh, not at least when I started and looking at error handling and, and, and saw it for the first time. So my concern was that why would we ever want to error out an observable intentionally? You know, what is it good for? Uh, what's, what's the point? And there are many, uh, just to highlight that. Um, but assume that we want to check the user to make sure that it is allowed to access the profile image here. We only check whether or not the username is Marcus. If it is, well, then we return true, and otherwise we return false and add a toaster to the screen. So in this case, a user whose username is not Marcus attempts to fetch the profile, and they will be faced with an username not valid toaster. So the idea is the following. If we know that the parameters are invalid, why bother connecting the backend if we know that it won't work anyway, right? So let's just return an error immediately. I know that I've been guilty while, while using NGRX, a state management library in Angular based on Redux, uh, with throwing action, actions in my components and wrapping the dispatch uh, function in an if statement to only dispatch whether or not the input parameters are valid to prevent from having errors in my stream. Uh, this is one way. But consider to use throw error sometimes and handle your errors in the observables instead. There is a way to recover from observables that has errored out, and that is through the retry operator. The operator can be configured to decide how many number of times it should retry and when it should retry. Retry when used to be the go-to option when we wanted to retry conditionally, but now it's possible to do so with a regular retry operator as well. We can combine retry together with catch error to create some dynamic recoveries, which we will see right now. So we are back at our profile. Now this time, we'll give our backend the benefit of the doubt. You know, perhaps it was just a hiccup that resulted in an error. So let's consider a retry to see if it returns our profile image on a second attempt. If we check out the code, we can see that it is basically identical with the previous example we demonstrated, with the only difference being that now we have added the retry operator in the pipe of the observable that is returned from the get image from URL method. The count option that we provide to the retry operator is the number of times we will retry, and delay either takes a number or a factory function that returns an observable. In this case, we use a factory function that will first add a toaster to the screen displaying that there is a retry attempting happening. And afterwards, two seconds to be exact, we will perform the retry of the error.http HTTP request. So we attempt to fetch the profile image. We fail, but we retry to see if it was a hiccup. And it appears as it was. And we see our profile image again. Let's just quickly revisit that button click subject that we had issues with previously. Mustn't there be a better way to kind of guarantee that my button becomes intact regardless of anyone else's error handling? I believe there is. So let's check out the code. After our button click was triggered and we switched over to the get image stream, we will guard our button click observable with this new catch error. So we check if the error that is returned is of an HTTP error response type. And if it is, well, then we know that the backend struggled. So let's notify the user what's happened for a toaster. 
and then let's simply return the original source observable that errored out. This can be reasonable since it has little to do with the fault of the button itself. Sure, if we click on the button again and the backend is down, the, the same thing will occur, and we might want to address that in some other way, but there's no real need to stop listening to the button click because of this. However, if the error was not of that response type, well, then there might be something completely unrelated uh, to the GET request that went wrong. Uh, and if that's the case, we would rather do us on a favor by catching the error and replacing it, since we really would miss the benefit of errors. If there was a null pointer exception, for example, there would be no point in trying to restore the button click, since it would error out probably 10 out of 10 times. And there's a chance that this error would have gone unnoticed if we caught it and replaced it without taking it in concern of what actually went wrong. So errors are really a blessing in disguise, and you should treat them as such. It's never fun when they occur in the middle of the night in production, but they, they, they really, really have, have a point and, and they can really, really help you debug your application. So I will actually replace these fire emojis with some fire truck light emojis because we are really being responsible here by throwing an error. Then we can reach the error handler and replace the image with an empty safe URL, uh, but also notify the rest of our system and perhaps a support team by logging the error with our logger service. In this case, we are being proactive and responding to errors in a quite deliberate manner with the idea of keeping a good user experience as well as helping ourselves as developers to get notified of unexpected exceptions. So, to summarize this talk, now we know how we can use throw error, catch error, finalize and retry to terminate or recover streams when exceptions and errors occurs. How the absence of error handling can cause a frustrating user experience with applications that don't respond as expected, and how we can use error handling to further leverage our observables in our application and create observables that can support complex program flows. For further reading, you should definitely check out the ArcGIS documentation. Mike Ryan and Brian Love from Live Love App creates killer workshops on ArcGIS, including error handling, which I highly recommend anyone to attend. The Angular documentation has some great input as well. And Deborah Corrada's course on ArcGIS uh, in Angular uh, reactive development on Pluralsight is, is, is really fantastic. Uh, I watched 10 minutes of content and had to update seven slides after that. It's quite hard to beat. As a developer, there's nothing better than revisiting old ArcGIS code and be able to think, this is awful, but I know why. So if you know you got some of that code at home, I encourage you to try to decorate it with some nice error handling. And please reach out if you want to talk more about it. I would love to connect. Special thanks to Jason Warner, Brooke Avery, Rahul Pandey, Alexander Chu, and Lee McEwen for some excellent feedback while preparing this talk. Uh, special thanks to Addy for creating uh, such an awesome event. And of course, to everyone at home uh, listening. I'm so honored and grateful to be uh, a part of this uh, event. Uh, thank you all so much.